Ken James, and Jason McKittrick. Brought to you by CryptoCurium. Good evening and welcome to another edition of Learning Lovecraft. I am your host, Jason McKittrick, and joining me as always, the traveler of the path, the Eldritch Path, Ken James. Hello, folks. And we're back again. Yeah. This is actually your fifth story, because last time we said fifth, it actually was your fourth. It was our fifth episode. I think I said fourth story, but fifth episode, I think. No? Okay. No, because I was listening to it. I was like, you know what? I hate him. That's fine. <laughs> Used to it by now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. The slights. I get the, I take the slights in stride. Yeah, it's it's meant to, you know, help you on your yeah, path. Yeah, it's molding me on right. my, on my this is, These are the side quests that help you when you get to the... You, you yeah, know. I you know. know. I get it. You know. I get it. So, this week we're tackling... The transition of Juan Romero. It's a lovely name. It is. It sounds like made, it's a made-up name, because yeah. it is. Yeah. Well, fiction writing. Sure, sure. But before we get to that, we have another transmission from the void. So this week, uh, we have some news that's uh, big in the Lovecraft community. Um, our friends over at the Lovecraft Arts and Sciences Council mm. could use your help. Whoa. Okay, so the fine folks over there, headed by uh, Niels Hobbs, great guy, um, they need some help keeping the ship afloat oh, no. and ensuring that Necronomicon 2024 can be a reality. Um, you know, downturn economics. Yeah. You know, it's uh, everyone's feeling the heat right now, feeling the uh, tightening of the belt, and, um, you yes, know, sir. it's just one of those times. And the Lovecraft community, uh, it's a small but tight-knit group, and it, this is the, one of the um, one of the few uh, conventions that we have, and this is, in my opinion, the best one. It takes place in, you know, Providence, Rhode Island, Lovecraft's uh, city. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they, they could just use some help. Um, so at the time of this recording, there's still a few days left for their GoFundMe, but by time this airs, it will have ended. However, you can always help uh, if you want to go over to their website, weirdprovidence.org, and uh, donate. You know, if you can help. Uh, if not, you know, maybe share the word. And, um, you know, I think this is already in the bag because I think they were halfway to their goal. Right. With like four days left or something. And uh, I think they're going to make it. And I think we're going to see them in uh, in Providence in 2024. Case in point, you can always help people helping people. There's always something to be done. That's true. Help help out, guys. Yeah, and they will. And uh, you know what? If they're listening to this, they probably already have. Yeah. You guys are good. Yeah. You guys are good at that. So that's... Uh, that's what I got for uh, our transmissions this week. It's a good transmission, and um, as a uh, newcomer on the path, <laughs> I would also appreciate because I'm going to be getting into these, you know, different uh, yeah. functions and, and things of that nature. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't think it's too uh, too weird to uh, reveal our plan that you know, hey, come next year, you know, we want to be full full uh, full steam ahead on this thing, yeah. and you know, we'd love to uh, visit Providence together, and you know, uh, do an episode there. So. Ken will be in full tourist mode. Yeah. I'll have the camera hanging out, you yeah. know, as the t- from my neck. The T-shirt, the um, the uh, sunscreen on your nose. Yes. Uh, jacked up socks with with the slides. Yeah, and like I'll have one of those like uh, hats that like has like a character on it. Yes. For like you know it tentacles. Would, yeah, it'd be tentacles. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully, Shuby Ken will be there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All righty. So back to the transition of Juan Romero. Oh. Um, wow. Uh, so first off, uh, this is the first tale of Lovecraft's to take place in the American Southwest. He only did three. Okay. And this is the first of those. And uh, it was written in uh, September 16th, 1919, and first published in the 1944, after his death, Arkham House volume Marginalia, because Lovecraft himself didn't really like this story after mm. the fact. Mm. But he lays a lot of seeds for future stories. Yeah, I... Uh Right off the bat, one of the first things I could say is like I kind of was like, "Oh, this is the vibe that I've heard of." Like mm-hmm. the the like foreboding, yeah. something's under the ground yeah. type deal. Like this was the first time where I was like, "Oh, mm-hmm. okay, now this is the lane. This yeah. is the lane." He's getting there. You could right. tell. I mean, you know, you could tell he's getting there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we uh, I'll get into it as we get mm-hmm. through the story, but um, this is certainly him once again. Like we mentioned last time, this is him. You know. Getting his uh, getting his set together, mm-hmm. you know, the, getting his uh, his tools together yeah. to uh, to write the big stories of the <laughs> yeah. Cthulhu mythos. Yes. <clears throat> um, so before we start, as always, I want to uh, I find it important to have a little bibliography section. So uh, this week we'll be using uh, an H.P. Lovecraft encyclopedia and I Am Providence Volume One, both by S.T. Joshi, the man. Yeah. Yeah. So as I'm reading to now, I find myself in my head just going S.T. Joshi. 
like yeah. in my head. Yes. For, I don't know why. It just it just happens. It pops well, in there now. Well, he's he is the expert. Um, you know, there's really uh, no one else with uh, his uh, knowledge and his you know breadth of uh, experience with Lovecraft. I mean, I think. That, if you're listening to this, you probably know enough uh, about the guy, but maybe not. Um, you know, he, he's responsible for us having all these corrected texts because a lot of these um, uh, stories that were published, not this one included, uh, but a lot of st- stories that were published uh, would end up in these pulps, and the editors would get a hold of them, just take just take them apart, just remove whole right. things. Lovecraft Lovecraft also really enjoyed uh, antiquated spelling, and you okay. probably come across that in yes. some of the stories. Yes. Uh, one of the most famous ones is he he writes show as S H E W. And people, you'll sometimes you'll hear if you get like a YouTube reading or something like he'll say shoe. He sho- he it, what he was shoon or uh, he will shoe them. It's just show. It's just right. the antiquated spell. I, I think uh, the most I've seen so far is demon. How he, he spells demon, but like color or honor, he likes to put the U in yeah, there. Right, right. It's, he's an Anglophile. So what we're saying is, St. Joshi got game. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think he would resist that uh, yeah, there description. Go. That's that. There we go. <laughs> okay, so yeah, um, this story, huh? I mean, this is the like you yeah. said, this is the one that kind of starts out and set, sets that mood for us. Um, and I, I, I got to go right with the opening uh, paragraph. Um, starts with um, of the events which took place at the Norton Mine on October eighteenth and nineteenth, eighteen ninety four. I have no desire to speak. A sense of duty to science is all that impels me to recall, in these last years of my life, scenes and happenings fraught with a terror doubly acute because I cannot wholly define it, but I believe that before I die, I should tell what I know of the, shall I say, transition of Juan Romero. (laughs) So... I think we're pulled back to Dagon a little bit, you know, right. uh, these last days, whether it's I'm old or I'm probably going to die from either insanity, yeah. a monster, or both. And it's like, I don't want to recall it. Like, yeah, I don't. But, like, yeah, I must. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> not, not that, you know, not that I want to, but I must. Right. So so we're set the, we're set the stage, um, and our unnamed protagonist, as, as is usually the case, uh, has just moved to the Southwest, um, and he kind of has a mysterious kind of background, right? Yeah. Um, he He's, he's moving, and he just had um, service of some kind. Spent some time in India. In India? Yeah, he has yeah. these, yeah. Uh, where he says he was uh, at home amongst white-bearded native teachers and amongst my brother officers. Uh, and that he had delved into, not a little into, excuse me, odd eastern lore when overtaken by the calamities which brought about my new life in America's vast west. Right. So... He had some kind of like, what was that story? What yeah. happened in India? Right. And this and this 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 baller ring that he brings yeah, back yeah, on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's almost just like a big turquoise, you know. Yeah. yeah. And like, I get uh, immediately when it's like you know my old life and all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, he did stuff in India. I'm like, yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to like place like what character in a movie where it's like, oh, they did. You know, or like a show, or yeah. like some some oh. guy that did on a mystic journey. You oh, know? it's 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 it's. I mean, it almost even like prefigures some kind of like Tarantino style. We're like, right. oh, here's the beginning, but later on in the movie, you're going to see that he, you know, slew a giant demon with <laughs> yeah. a magic sword, and the <laughs> ring was the only thing to kill it. Like, yeah, it's like, right. yeah, when does that happen? Yeah, right, 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 right. Um, Let your imagination write the other story as right. you're reading this one. Which, which uh, once again is a, is a thing we're going to see more with Lovecraft going forward. Um, and then also uh, he. He he takes a new name, which is uh, he says, uh, which is very common and carries no meaning. So what, John Smith? Yeah, probably John Doe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then he might make a lot of notebooks and then murder people, right, right, um, right, according right. to the Seven Deadly Sins. Did this? Did he cut his finger? Uh, it doesn't no. say it, but okay. I think it's implied. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So that, that that point too, where it's like, okay, right off the bat, you get these hints of like you know this old life that he lived, mm-hmm. and he's here just trying to you know uh, not do anything. Uh, spectacular, not do anything crazy. He's just like, I'm working here. Yeah, you know? it, it's almost like... A means to an end. Yeah, it's almost like, uh, I don't know, like a soldier who went to war, and now he just wants to come home and he wants a simple life. But, yeah. you know, something so crazy happened that where he's coming from England, apparently, possibly, Yeah, because they had their ties to India. Yeah. So it's like a, an English soldier yeah. who comes over to the colonies, I think I even say that at the mm-hmm. beginning, and, um, you know, he's looking for to get as far away from that nonsense as yeah. possible. So the, Put the, his mind and life back together somewhere new right. where it's just like, 
I'll labor. Yeah. I just want to labor. I don't want yep. to think. You yep. know? S- yeah. Simple life, just a hard day's work for a yeah. hard day's pay. And then he just, you know, whatever he's working, um, you know, and he finds himself at this um, this mine uh, in the summer of uh, and autumn of 1894. Uh, he says, I dwelt in the drear expanses of the Cactus Mountains, employed as a common laborer at the celebrated Norton Mine. So you have this big mine that this, uh, they give you a little backstory, this, this uh, old gentleman finds, and it's this subterranean, mm-hmm. just unbelievable they're, they're saying there's so much gold in here yeah. that and there's so many veins untapped veins that this is it we're, we're so yeah. rich the guy who found it is already rich and I'm sure he's sold a few claims already yeah. and uh, you know th- and there's th- like all the ladders they talk about like the diff going yeah, down and yeah yeah no it's um, it's, uh, it's a hell of a place down there so they find this uh, this area and um, our, our unnamed narrator comes in and uh he talks about this uh, this group of individuals that come into the camp, and among them is this um, I don't know kind of uh, among the uh, native Mexicans there. Um, Surly. Yeah, uh, some choice words are used. I believe he calls them uh, greasers. <laughs> Good job, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he was in character at that point. Right. Right. Oh, right. Right. That's you know it. what I mean? That's it. Uh, he was. This guy was from afar. He didn't yeah. know. Uh, you know. I heard this word the other day. <laughs> We're to assume that he was of a higher class where he came from. Right. So he would treat any person one step below him like dirt. Right. Yeah. Calling them peons. Yes. Which I want to point out. Which might even be my own ignorance. I had to look this up as I was reading it. I was like peon. I was like, does that actually come from literally meaning people that you would pee on? And it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, oh, the peons. It's like, yeah. why do you call them that? But it literally just means someone of lower class. But I was like, oh, yeah. are they just like... Yeah, they're the ones to pee on. Yeah. They're like, take my piss. Right. Take it take it from me and That go. says more about me than it does this. It so. truly does. It does. It does. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I forgive you. Yeah, I, I know. Someone won't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, he talks about, you know, um, the, the arrival of this uh, singular character here, uh, Juan Romero. Um, and that there's something kind of curious about him that his features don't exactly look like the others. He has this 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 fairer skin, uh, a refined conformation, and uh, being vastly unlike the uh, the others of the loca- locality. Um, so he says uh, it is curious that although he differed so widely from the mass of uh, Hispanicized and tribal Indians, Romero gave not the least impression of Caucasian blood. It was not the Castilian conquistador or the American pioneer, but the ancient and noble. Aztec. Mm-hmm. So right off the bat, we get um, okay. So he's not, you know. There's something. There's very some. There's something very different about this guy, right? Yes. So um, immediately he could tell, and then the guy kind of takes a shine to his ring right yeah. away. He he notices the ring, and it it kind of almost makes him like realize that's like a status kind of symbol. Mm-hmm. But also, there's a good reason why he does have that ring. Like right. maybe someone gifted it to him for doing some deed. We don't or, know. Yeah, or he's of some kind of bloodline yeah. that are supposed to have that ring. So, Or he got it from Yarnum. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Bloodborne. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> we find out, he, he finds out, you know, he finds that this guy, this guy's pretty interesting. So he, he comes to a point where he's like, I, you know, to find out about this guy. So he finds out from someone around. They don't really go too too much into it, but uh, he uh, Juan had been found as a child in a crude mountain hut, and he was the only survivor of this apparent epidemic which had like swept through because they find right. him uh, in this hut um, next to this unusual rock fissure. That's important. Uh, and he's between two skeletons being newly picked by vultures, which apparently could have been his parents. They don't know. Yeah. Um, and no one knew their identity, and they were soon forgotten. Okay, so um, uh, right after this happens, this this rock fissure that's strange closes again, and um, through some kind of avalanche, once again, these, there's yeah. this, this rumbling tectonic activity. activity. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe it's a sandworm. We don't know. Or maybe it's Gozer the Gozerian. The, yeah, it could either every be every episode. Yeah. Yep, could either be Ghostbusters or Kevin Bacon and the gang. Right, Tremors, both know. Lovecraftian. Yeah, sure. Um, so you have this avalanche, avalanche that closes it, um, and then you know this Mexican cattle thief, quote unquote, uh, comes by, gives him a name, and raises him. Yeah. <laughs> Something very anime about that. Yeah, a lot yeah. of animes take that 
storyline and run with yeah, it. Yeah, like found in you know found by a loner out doing his loner job. Yeah, and there's and this, like, there's he's this like, kid. Oh, well, that's my duty. That's yeah. that's the voice actor that always right. the American voice actor that right. dubs it. You know, he's right. like, well, it's on me now to take care of your kid. Yeah, or that dude from Gears of War was that John DiMaggio? He always did. That dude is always yeah. in there too. Yeah, good call. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, the finding of the strange child that has some kind of you could tell this this child is imbued with destiny, right? <laughs> and some jerk. It's always like a jerk kind of yeah. guy that's just yeah. like for some weird reason. It's like, yep, you're with me now, kid. Mm -hmm. Let's go. I, I, is it implied that he's a jerk, or maybe he had to become a cattle thief because of all the things happening around him? Well, the, the things that he says and does. Okay, usually, he's rough around the edges, yes. but has a heart of gold. He's somewhere in there. The cattle thief. Yes. I, hey, I'm just, I'm just, add, we're just trying to add to this story. It's, it's short, but this is all implied. Yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> it totally is. Um, and then so they talk about this, this weird kind of like. Attachment to this this Hindu ring that he uh, doesn't really want to tell you how he got why yeah. he got it like we said just that it means a lot to him yes um, and he kind of he kind of even says of its nature and manner of coming into my possession I cannot speak it was my last link with a chapter of life forever closed and I valued it highly <laughs> yeah can you be more cryptic pal no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I, I love this line too. Uh, its hoary hieroglyphs seem to stir some faint recollection in his untutored but active mind, though he could not possibly have beheld their like before. This is the day laborer guy. Yeah, how, could right. he, how could he know what this is? And like, but yeah, but also too, like, what a what a wonderful way of calling someone like a like a, a mush brain in a way, you know, a like peon. yeah, like what he that was such a descriptive way of just going like. This idiot knows about this ring yeah. somehow. Like that's yeah. literally took that yeah. and just made a pretty paragraph. Yeah, you know? and, and, yeah. Basically, looking at the guy, say, "Look at this guy. There's no way he knows about anything. Yeah. He must have seen something before. There's no yeah. way this guy, you know." Yeah, how could this guy know anything? books? Yeah, <laughs> travel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This guy already gets on your nerves right in the beginning. Yeah. Um, and then fast forward, and we have you know kind of like a little. It's it's you know it's montagey, but they, they become friends. Yeah. You know, a little bit of a language barrier. Right. He's got crude Spanish, but his is like the uh, Castilian Spanish. Yeah. So there's no way he would understand my refined Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, dude, it's, come on. Yeah. <laughs> with the ring, he's probably yeah. running like this with the pinky yeah, the, up the whole time. time. That ring was definitely on his pinky. Yeah. By the way. He's Raised. Like, he's like, oh, I'm working. Yeah. You know, <laughs> he has a shovel in one hand. He's just poking. Yep. Mm. But even to the point where he says that the guy becomes. Like his like his manservant. It's yeah. like, dude. So you're a day laborer who right. has a manservant. Yeah, you're making this guy do your work. Yeah, you, this guy's pulling double duty now. Yeah, for you. This dude's digging holes. This guy's under an umbrella complaining yeah. about the heat, shining his ring the whole time. Yeah, you know, just like, I'll let you have this if you just do a few more days of yeah. work for me. The fine cloth. He's like, mm, yeah. It stays. It stays clean and polished. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Juan, <laughs> that's how he calls him. Yeah. Juan, yep. I'm out of water again. No, Juan, yeah. can you stop working and get me yeah. some more? It's like whoa. But but pull, you know. But you're gonna have to work all the harder after yeah. you bring me the water. Right. Um, but they're friends. Yes. <laughs> right. It's like okay. Yeah. Almost like it's written by someone who never experienced any f hard physical labor yeah. ever. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, right. So, <laughs> fast forward a little bit, um, and we come to a point where the workers place uh, a huge charge of dynamite because they need to access more of this, um, more yeah. of these veins. Yes. And they put this huge thing on there because they're like they're convinced this is like this is solid rock. We got to get through yeah. there. If we, it'll rain gold if we blow this. Yeah. Up. So, exactly. So they put this giant thing on there, and they let it off. And when it goes, it like everything shakes. They're like the entire earth shakes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Jurassic Park style. Everybody's drink. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, but it's so bad that to the point there, they thought it was solid rock. But no, there's this cavern underneath. Mm -hmm. It was almost. It was like hollow. Um, and they come inside, and um, it's this like abyss. They drop. They're dropping ropes down. There's yeah. no bottom. Yeah, it's, there's like people go down. They're like, I'm not doing that again. Yeah, like, nope. even yeah, and even and the local workers are even. You know, I'm, I'm imagining you know Dracula style. They're all like cross themselves. <laughs> we're not. We're not going back in there. Yeah. You know, and you know, because it literally to their ability to measure, it's infinite. Yeah. And something like that, you know, I think it immediately starts to like, 
you know, the myth kind of stuff start, starts to take over for right. people because it's like, um, it's not in the story, but I know that um, in Aztec cultures and, and also the Mayan culture, the underground was very significant in their like their yeah. mythology. Like um, the underworld, gods live down there. So yeah. if you, you know, here they are with this technology to blow these things up. This was you know peak technology yeah. at this point. You blow this giant hole in the earth, and then it opens up and it goes, and there's no way to the bottom. Yeah, like crap. Yeah. We just, uh, yeah, oh, we man. fucked up. Yeah, we, <laughs> we bleeped up. Yeah, we bleeped up. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> Fast and loose on a Saturday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, to, yeah, so, like, they, they immediately, too, they're like, oh, man, a bottomless hole. They're like, stop. You know. We've seen this before. They're like, we got to stop the work. Like, everyone, yeah. like, let's ponder on this a day. Exactly. Yeah, let's let's consult the ancient texts. Yeah. <laughs> Let's bring in Grandma, who's apparently 250 years old. Yeah. She comes in with her cane yeah, and like says like, some cryptic oh. shit. And, I don't know uh, Spanish, but I would have done a really good old lady speak. Maybe if I do like a, oh, yeah. a great oh. You, you can't even hear what she's saying. They yeah. have to have an interpreter. He puts the ear. Yeah. She says, this is no good. Yeah, no <laughs> it's good. one of those. Yeah. This is when the movie starts to get good. Fill it. Yeah, exactly. She says, fill it or die. Yeah, this is the point in the movie where Indy's like, don't come up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. So, nice. So this, so, so next we come to a part where um, it's starting to get you know closer to night, and this this strange storm starts to gather. Right, almost a, um, it's peculiar, and they even des- describe the cloud shape as kind of peculiar. Mm-hmm. Uh, a coyote starts to howl. Dogs start responding. Yeah, to the coyotes. Yeah. it's bad. Yeah, it's nuts. It's when that's bad. happening, yeah, you're like, all right. But even stranger, because um, Juan in his broken English. Um, says that there's this other sound below it all yeah. and it has a rhythm to it yes and then our narrator are we calling him john smith yeah john smith yeah um he, he he picks up on it and it has a rhythm but like he hears that it's a rhythm but like he doesn't want to describe it it's right. like he doesn't want to say okay this sounds like something like maybe something in his past in india he's like yeah. this reminds me and immediately when he says that, I'm just like, okay, so the Kali Ma yeah. part, when he yeah. comes down, they look over the part, and they're just, you know, the big statue, everybody's... Yep. Yeah, that's what I think. I like it. I like it. Um, I'm thinking, to, like, my mind, too, went to, like, almost, like... He's like, I don't want to describe it, because maybe it was, like, even way more intricate than he could describe it. You know? Yeah. Because in all of his, you know... Yeah. All of, in all of his, like, you know, oh, I, I've well-traveled and well-studied, and right. I'm trying to escape this big, bad past. Right. He was even like, oh, what the hell is that? I think... I think it strikes him in a way that he hasn't been struck since he went to his previous life, sure, like you're saying. Yeah. And I think that it's... Maybe it's not the same thing, because they really don't... Lovecraft really doesn't give you a solid answer what yeah. what it is, but there's certainly some kind of relation to whatever is going on there, whatever they broke into, whatever is subterranean. Mm-hmm. There is some kind of parallel in India, and his ring starts to glow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Just like Sting in um, Lord of the Rings. I can't help it. I've watched so many movies. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Thank you. <laughs> so, middle of the night, shit gets wild. Yeah, it does. Juan leaps from his bed, starts going crazy, telling him about the sound. Um, he's got to go. He's yeah. got to go. So, uh, John Smith uh, follows him. So, yeah, at this point, too. So, now we're like, wait, wait, He's got to go to the sound. Yes. In the hole that was blew up. Yes. Where he was found, where the fissure opened and closed. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think that that's not there. That's just in the beginning. They tell you that this boy. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're getting this hint yeah. of he was, I was born of this. You yes, know? exactly. And you're getting this hint that there's something that's calling him under the ground yes. to where he was born with the fresh yes. pick. Like maybe some monster came up, ate these two people and dropped yes. the kid off. Who knows? Maybe. 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 Um, so they start running back there. They, they tell you about this this descent down these rickety ladders. It's it's directly from like Assassin's Creed, like yes. chasing someone down the ladders. Like yes. heaven. Yeah, that's yep. my mind went right there. <laughs> Um, and as he's going, he's yelling all these crazy things. He hears some Spanish, but then he starts saying things in this other tongue that he doesn't know. Yeah. And he mentions specifically, um, I'm going to go for it, Huitzilopochtli. Oh. I used some, you know, try to get some. And now this guy, because they don't really go into it uh, very far, um, because this, um, <laughs> this guy. This guy. So, I mean, 
So first off, uh, Lovecraft mentions uh, he, he mentions a specific um, uh, footnote about this conquest of Mexico. It's in the, it's in the story. It tells you that that's what he's talking about. And luckily, our boy St. Joshi. Uh, pulls out wh- exactly what he's talking about. What book that he's talking about? Right. And so when he mentions the Aztec god, um, the 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 passage that he's he's referencing is from uh, Conquest of Mes- Mexico from Prescott's uh, book, um, and he says about the god at the head of all stood and terrible Huitzilopochtli, the Mexican Mars, although it is doing injustice to the heroic war god of antiquity to identify him with this sanguinary monster. Right? Sanguinary, yeah. See, I don't know what's more impressive about like guys like that, like I see Joshi. Like, is it their ability to recall something they once studied, or is it their ability to search for the thing and find it that is more impressive to me? You know, this, I don't know. Well, um, maybe both. I mean, I mean, ST's known for. I mean, the man was a researcher. He, you know, is and yeah, was. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, to be able to pull all the stuff is is, is, is amazing. Um, so, the, anyway, the, the, the passage continues. Uh, this was the patron deity of the nation. His fantastic image was loaded with costly ornaments. His temples were the most stately and august of the public edifices, and his altars reeked with the blood of human hecatombs in every city of the empire. Disastrous indeed must have been the influence of such a superstition on the character of the people. Okay. Yeah. So... Uh, you know, and I, and I looked a little further. I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with Aztec stuff. Um, so this, um, you know, let's say all right, you've seen Apocalypto, right? Yes. Um, yes. The god that they're worshiping, the, the god of the sun, this is that god. Okay. So whenever you see a human sacrifice or anything like that, they are trying. They are worshiping this god. This is their. This is their guy. It's like what's his name at the end of uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, the giant Aztec. God looking kind of guy that I use oh, a different yeah, name. Yeah, 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 but yeah, that's yeah. what my mind went to when you said that. It's probably that's probably the, the what they were thinking about right, at that right. point. So um Nerd talk, sorry. Guys. Sure, sure, sure. Well, that, that's been the whole this yeah. is what we do. Yeah. They know. <laughs> by now. Yeah, hopefully by now. <laughs> so yeah, so he's he's the Aztec god of the sun and, and also the god of war. Uh massive amounts of human sacrifices were made to him. And also, even though it's not his specific domain, um, I think I don't know if it was Lovecraft who made the connection, but there is that, like I said, the significance of the underworld right. to the Aztecs, uh, specifically cenotes. The nice. uh, yeah, cenotes. it's a fun word to say. It is. <laughs> so, um, you know, so like, I guess what we're mo- supposed to take from that is that a he has these Aztec features, um, and then he's being called back to the earth, like you were saying. Yes. Um, are we to think that he's being called back to? Is that God down there? Like. Is that what's down there? Like, yeah. is that what he's being called to? What What is down? What's the drumming that's down there? Yeah. So, um, he gets to this part, and and Juan disappears and goes down this, you know, this this hole. the abyss, the hole. And Lovecraft says, uh, "Advancing, I peered over the edge of that chasm, which no line could fathom." With yeah, his pink, with his like, pinky yeah, ring. Yeah, and yeah, they yeah. both peek over at the yeah. same time. Mm. Mm. No, it's just him. It's just him because Juan already went over. No, I'm saying the ring. Oh, the, the, ring. the ring's yeah, looking too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> protect me, ring. Yeah, mm. you're glowing. <laughs> um, and which was now a pandemonium of flickering flame and hideous uproar. At first, I beheld nothing but a seething blur of luminosity, but then shapes, all infinitely distant, began to detach themselves from the confusion, and I saw. Was it Juan Romero? But God, I dare not tell you what I saw. <laughs> you know, some power from heaven commuting to my aid obliterated both sights and sounds in such a crash as may be heard when two universes collide in space. Chaos supervened, and I knew the peace of oblivion. <laughs> Colorful words, man. It's, oh, this is this yeah. is Lovecraft's jam, man. Yeah. He's getting it all together. This yeah. is him. This is him preseason. He's yeah. he's yeah. getting. Yeah. He's sitting around. He's like, oh yeah. man. Just, He's making the little adjustments to his swing. Yeah. You know, oh man, yeah, no, it's, 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 I, the descriptions of this one, like, it mm-hmm. started, like, you, you see him spinning the yarn, right? Oh, yeah. And, like, yep. yeah. The, uh, the transition of Juan Romero or Lovecraft showing up for spring training. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, so, uh, A, we have a couple of things that we've seen before, right? Where, um, he sees something that he just doesn't like either is incapable of describing or just doesn't want to because yeah. it's like that's not real that yeah. can't be real why did I see that and then me having read the stuff about the Aztec uh, god before Huitzilopochtli I got it um, <laughs> is that what he looked over and saw was there like okay the shapes came together but then did he see like what did it come together and he saw it like was 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 Ron was Juan Romero like 
uh, was he like a vessel for it, just like in um, Beyond the Wall of Sleep? Right. Like, or was he some sort of key? Yeah. To keymaster. Yeah. Right. Was was his like sacrifice or jumping into mm-hmm. this pit the thing that like brought it? Yeah. Into form, physical form. Yeah. Like I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either, and I think that's that's what's fun about these stories. Yes. It's like there's that fun speculation, and he was hoping nerds would get together and yeah. talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, like you said, it, he, all these things come together, and then, boom, chaos supervened, and I knew the piece of oblivion. So, he passed out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> too much. Yeah. I was thinking, too, like, like yeah. Oh. He gets the yeah. vapors. Uh. <laughs> he goes down. I, and I was thinking that, too, like, in a funny way, like... Maybe this is some, you know, hoity-toity guy retelling the story. Mm-hmm. In reality, he didn't even chase Juan into that. This is just him. He didn't even see these things. Right. Which, he hey, just, is yeah, kind yeah. of backed up by the end of the story. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I kind of hear that. He's like, put a part in where I punch a shock. Yeah, right. It's like, what? Yeah, There's yeah. The, we're, not, we're in the desert. He's just like, do, do it. it. Yeah, <laughs> make it so. Or I will pee on you. Ooh. He, he's that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the narrator wakes up in his bed. Ring is missing because they've yeah. had it. They're like, get that thing, get yeah, that. Dude, that sh- <laughs> was that thing fucking glowing last yeah. night? Yeah, so get that freaking out glowing last night. I know. Um, it's gone um, for whatever reason. Almost like maybe it got pulled in too. But Juan is dead um, with no apparent cause of death. Yeah. Um, and moreover, the other workers swear that neither he or nor Juan left their bunks last night. Yeah. Here we go again with this. Yes. So, already we know this guy's an unreli- unreliable narrator. Yeah. Because he's a jerk. Yeah. Uh, but, is it one of those things where it's like, is this more of this astral stuff that Lovecraft was playing with? Where like, oh, because um, he calls it the transition of Juan Romero. Did he, did somehow Juan transition from his body? Right. And he was able to leave, but because of um, the narrator, because of his ring, was he able yeah, to... Yeah, to come out of his body with... Yeah, like did that have spirit, some, right. yeah. So did that have some kind of thing about it? Who can say? Um, John Smith can say. I mean, he can, but we can't. We can't rely on his yes, shit. We can't. Uh, <laughs> um, and that's 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 basically all there is to it. The right. Uh, the um, the chasm has closed up again, um, and and not even just that it closed up. It's they're like, oh well, it just closed. Whatever. This is this, it's it's a chasm. We can yeah. get right to it. It's, it's basically hollow. But they keep digging and digging. Yeah. It's solid rock now. Yeah, and there's like no more gold there either. Nope, right? there's just yeah. it's just it's just closed. Um, and um, at the end, uh, which is actually kind of my favorite part of the story, is the ending quote because um, whether it's we're talking about this weird thing that happened to him, but this could actually, um, I think, uh, be a good summation of how it feels anytime you encounter something disturbing or possibly even paranormal. Right. So he ends the story with. My opinion of my whole experience varies from time to time. In broad daylight, and at most seasons, I am apt to think the greater part of it a mere dream. But sometimes, in the autumn, about two in the morning, when winds and animals howl dismally, there comes from inconceivable depths below a damnable suggestion of rhythmical throbbing. And I feel that the transition of Juan Romero was a terrible one indeed. Right, so when we're f- hanging out during the day, that's mm. not scary. But when yeah. you're by yourself at two o'clock in the morning and it's yeah. that right season, you're yep. like, ooh, yeah. And I really like that because oh yeah, that's that's written by someone that has like dwelled on this stuff. That yeah, that closing there, even though the wording is different, yeah. it re- it really did remind me of like one of the folklore stories that we love. Sure, like that closing of it, the way he said it. Yeah, but well. Uh, words are different, and it's you yeah. know it's way more eloquent than yeah. we would get. But that ending is totally a folklore ending, right? Uh, just this the the concept of that, like you know, it would be said in like something that like scary stories tell the dark or any mm. kind of American folklore yeah. that you read. It would it would probably be like you know yeah you know, like how you just said like you know when I'm alone at night or like you know, during the day something isn't very scary. I right. see it and I can deal with it, <clears throat> but at the end of the night. When I start to, you know, the winds pick up, I start to hear, hear the dogs howling, mm-hmm. you know, it really hits me that this guy probably died pretty bad. You know, like that's... Yeah, yeah, or died in a way that's just not part of our experience. Right, right. So it's like, once again, this thing haunts him. Like, during the day, he's cool, but like, when he's in the lonely hours, the yeah. small lonely hours, um, you know, like the, the, the hours described by Poe and the Raven, it's like, you get in those weird hours. Yeah. That it's just like, that's when it comes back to you, because it's like, yeah, but... 
you know, when the distraction of the day isn't there and you get and your mind gets thinking on stuff, yeah, that's when this stuff starts to hit you. Yeah, that is when it starts to hit you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would always use um, when I was younger and I could and like my work schedule and everything. Mm-hmm. Th- those hours of the night were always best for writing music sure. and working on music for me. Mm-hmm. One, no one's gonna come bug you. Exactly. And and you already got all that kind of stuff out of your system to the day mm-hmm. where it's time to buckle. You know, I would start around let's say like eight p.m. Mm-hmm. I'd finish at six a.m. Mm-hmm. And it would just be work all night and okay. writing. Mm-hmm. And I was able to tap into something in those hours. Yeah. Just because while I'm doing all this, my yeah. mind was able to just spin. yeah because yeah you're not you're not being distracted <clears throat> by um, you know. All the daytime yeah. stuff, where it's like, at any moment someone could call you, or yeah. any moment someone can, you know, come and like, uh, or a phone call, or someone at the door, yeah. or oh, you know, I got to do this now. It's dinner time. I got to figure this yeah. out, and you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff because you know you're in those those small hours. Mm-hmm. And I think this is something that's been mentioned by you know writers and artists for centuries now, where it's like there's something about those weird small hours of the morning yeah. where it's right. like something something yeah, happens. Absolutely, I, I'm 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 with it, and I. <clears throat> I definitely I, I like that that bringing that up at the end there mm-hmm. as like a nice little bookend where it's like it leaves you in that point to mm-hmm. think about those kind of things so it's right. like here's a story that I ponder at mm-hmm. uh, in these hours and these times that really scares me so it leads you into that kind of thought process when you're alone thinking about the story yeah. or whatever um, I really liked that but one thing I also uh, I took away when I was thinking about um, there's another little cherry bomb he left in there mm. right and it's like the um, the gold yeah and that area and where it happened it makes me go like when I'm thinking about this I'm like is all that gold is that like attached is that like some kind of like almost like cross between alchemy is it like a trace of something that came from something coming through those areas mm. that has since crossed over. I hadn't thought that. That's and good. It, and it's like, okay, why is it so valuable? Oh, because gold can, you know, electricity can move through it so well, right? Yeah, it's a great conductor. Yeah, it's a great conductor. Yeah. And um, there's not a lot of it, which makes it more valuable. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, of course, ador- uh, you know, people would adorn themselves in jewelry to show their status and all this yeah. stuff. But it's like, okay, is this is this a uh, almost like a portal site? Mm. An ancient portal site. That's sure. why there's so much gold, and all these veins and different things that you find with all the gold in it, blowing it up, almost like cause some kind of reaction with the gold, mm-hmm. with the area, with the energy that open up the other side or, or something. Mm-hmm. So that was one little one little thought that I had there, you know, that, that took me to like, uh, oh, is that why there is gold? Is that why, you know? No, that's interesting. I, I, that's, that's yeah, maybe these sites that have all this gold, you know, have, are some kind of, like, you know, thing that can move between realms or, or whatever Or was a or place, was, of, yeah. you know, and it's just the the thing that grew there from all the, you know, yeah. the, the transference of energy from the other side. And yeah. No, that's I, why I, yeah. the gold is so powerful and it's... Ability yeah. to conduct and then gets absorbed when this thing happens because then the gold right. just isn't it's there gone. It's gone. Yeah. It's all rock now. I like that. Nice one, Ken. Hey, man. That, like I said, <laughs> just a little cherry bomb that I th- no, I like put that. There. Yeah. Um, and what's funny about the story though is that we, I mentioned in the beginning that it was um, it was written in 1919, but it wasn't published um, until uh, 1944 in the Marginalia book that was released by Arkham House because Lovecraft. Um, yeah, really didn't like the story too much after the fact, and I can see why because um, he was just getting there. At the he was point. just getting there, yeah. and then when he when he moved forward to some of these stories that are coming up, um, he, um, I think he saw. He's like, oh, I saw where I was going with that. Yeah. I don't need to have this out there. So he yeah. never wanted to publish. He put it away, and um, you know, he 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 refused to allow it to be published in in his lifetime, um, even in any of the amateur presses that he was involved in. Um, he disavowed it and. Uh, it's really this is a story that um, early on didn't really p- appear on too many um, lists of his stories um, and really didn't show it to anybody until 1932 uh, one of his close friends R.H. Barlow um, persuaded um, HPL to send him the manuscript uh, so that he could prepare a typeset of it and um, yeah that's the only reason we really have a, you know a concrete version of it is because of that and I'm glad it, it exists because yeah. You know, you'll see as we go down, you'll see... It's a cool story, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and it, it totally... It has all these things that we see, like, you know, I'm sure we're going to see it again. Yeah. But it, it's, you know, it's like an adventure tale in just, like, a, a small clip. It's like those 
oh, and so we run down to the like, yeah. you know, like the, the he did a really cool job of like little montages and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And it was like, and you're right, I can totally see why he was like, don't put this out there. Yeah. It's like it's like you're saying it was spring training, man. That's yeah. not the work. That's he's right, like right, right. he's like that's the work before I do work. You right. Know, like right. This is a comedian stepping in, uh, you know, a Monday night, you know, open mic or right. session, doing a five minute set. Yeah. You before know, he does his, it out. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, and like I said in the beginning, also this is um, this is his one of only three stories that uh, take place in the Southwest. Because uh, coming up, we have the um, later down the road, we have the Curse of Yig, Mwah! <laughs> and the Mound. Eh, pretty good, yeah. <laughs> long okay. but still good. But when we get to those stories, you're like, okay, I see where okay, you yeah. know, I, I see where he was um, where he was going when he started some of the things that he uh, put in the story so I know a lot of people don't like the story and it's kind of there are some definite some things in it that are just like well he's a little too uh, a little too rough he's a little too <laughs> he's a little too vague on the uh, ring thing I mean we can sit here and speculate and we've, yeah. uh, we've all read spooky shit so we can yeah. be like oh well, this probably means this or yeah. this is you yeah. know this is the artifact kind of thing yeah. um, but he really you know it's uh, you know it's proto HP, which is where we're at. Proto HPL, and um, hey, I love reading it because like this actually kind of informs the stuff that I, you know, read later down the yeah. road, or or I should say comes out later down the road. The things that I read earlier, because this is another story like the last few that I hadn't read since I want to say I probably read this. Um, I guess when I was a teenager, hadn't read it in a long time. I was aware of it. I knew there was some like weirdness that went on, but I was like, oh yeah, there's not really like a monster in this one. This yeah. is still this is still him like. He knows there's things somewhere. He doesn't know what the things are yet, though. Yeah. Like, we don't see tentacles yet. We don't have things beyond time and space yet. We have things that are really deep in the Earth. Yeah. And infinite, but he doesn't... He hasn't he's gotten like, to the... Infinite, but tangible? You know, he's yeah, like, and, yeah, and doesn't... And so he's still working that out. And um, it's cool, because you can see the steps with each of yeah. these stories. That, like, oh, he's getting here. Oh, it's deep in the Earth. Okay, maybe the Earth is... You know, maybe these, these things in the Earth are, you know like you said transition points so yeah no i i liked it a lot um i i like i said it was the first time yeah i was getting like the the vibes that i know from, yeah from 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 what i know and what i understand of mm -hmm. of mr lovecraft and um you know it was cool I, you know i, I like the we get the uh, this pompous almost <laughs> like uh there's gonna be a lot of these guys yeah and i i feel like um the guy that played Alan Parrish in uh, Jumanji, the the and the hunter, like the father or the father. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like yes. that's the guy. I don't know why. I yeah, feel like no, my I can see that for and sure. He's like you know, oh, oh, mm, yeah. come on, go, you know, like no. I, I I just picture that kind of guy, you know, pronounced nose and yes, rigid features, yes. trying to start a, <laughs> a a new a new life, and he's like he thinks he's fitting in more than he actually is. Yes. That's that's what I'm. That's yeah. what I was, like I was he was like about. yeah because in the beginning you kind of get the um, oh um you know I left this you know I'm I'm leaving my life behind in you know England and you know the uh, the life that I had in you know apparently you know supernatural uh, wars that are going on over in yeah. uh, India uh, and I'm coming here because I just want quiet but he brings his shit with him yeah like you know definitely has a walking stick <laughs> has tea like at three sharp his. His garb is flowy. He has a smoking jacket on, no matter what. <laughs> but he definitely has the um, the fez, either a fez or the the hat. What's the name of the hat? The um, that the hunters wear. I can't think of the name of it. The tan hat. That's kind of oh, the safari hat. Yeah, like the safari hat. There's a word for it. Um, we'll go with safari hat. We'll, we'll go with safari hat. Yeah, but you know. Also, and it's good that you bring that up. This is a character that he's going to use this type of character. To different degrees, in more of his in more of his stories going down because it's it's a lot of unnamed narrators, clearly a stuffy white guy, yeah. and um, we work together. You're also, but you're also my man, sir. Yeah, it's like, God. yeah, yeah, some 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 bad language towards your friend there. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, awful. Get it, yeah, get it. Do you think he made him go get a coffee too? Oh, of course. Yeah, he if he if he came back with one for himself. Mm -hmm. If Juan just came back with like a coffee to enjoy, yeah, he, and even if he didn't ask for one, right? Like Juan, actually, you know, it was more like this. He comes in, he's got two coffees. He's like, you know, Senor, here's a coffee. Slaps yeah. it out of his yeah. hand. Tea, yeah. Earl Grey, <laughs> go. Yeah, it's like, oh. And Juan's like, Senor. Yeah, he's like, 
Yeah. Flashes the ring a little bit. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. So, so that's uh, I think that's all. It's uh, fit to print on um, the transition of Juan Romero. The rapture of Juan Romero. Sure. <laughs> the uh, the leveling up of Juan Romero. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm glad you liked it. No, I did. I no did freaking like out on this one at no, all. No, 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 no. This these the, this one it was no. It was just a, it was a cool story. Yeah. And like I just I started to see traces of what like I said what I understood. Yeah. Uh, from Howard and. Um, no, it was it, yeah. It was it was cool. It was it was actually besides the tomb. Mm-hmm. I feel like this one was the most together, if that makes sense. Okay, more than Dagon. Yeah, because Dagon, once again, he, he gets into like the slithering things and like the right, right, and right. like the ancient religions and right. things like that. Right, like mm-hmm. that one. He's painting with a wider brush. Sure. This one is more centralized yes. to one area. Mm-hmm. Here's a story. This blows up. Blah blah blah. It's Gives, like. Yeah. Real together, real nice. The only thing that we're set to ponder back, yep. besides the guy's backstory yep. and everyone's backstories, which I'm taking that this is going to be the whole thing. We're going to be guessing everyone's backstories the whole time. But this one, the well, I mean, you know, yeah. the real mystery here is what was. Yeah, what was it? We get some definite locations, years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, s- at least some. You know. Some real setting with this, like you could, you could, like you could take this out, you could film this story, right? You know what I mean? And the, yeah. And the yeah. thing is, because because he leaves out the descriptions of the creature, yeah. that's like the big or the whatever, whatever the entity, yeah. and that's like that's the big like mystery here. It's like, okay, what did he see? Mm-hmm. And that's almost like the plot device. Mm-hmm. He keeps going, I shan't say, or I can't yeah. recall, or I can't, and that's kind of like the pull, the draw, yeah. And that's where you're left with the mystery, yeah. Because you know, we saw something, you know, something happened, right? And then at the end, you go like, you know, I'm still here, blah blah blah, but. We we can piece those things together. I mm-hmm. just this was very cohesive for me. It was a nice little package, and like I was like, oh, yeah, I know who the baddie is. I know who the goodie is. You know, I know the who, who I know who all the players are. Yeah. The only thing I don't know was what was down there. Right. And it's funny too because we have a story coming up. I think it's two stories from now. Uh, the statement of Randolph Carter, okay. where um, it's actually kind of like um, he, HP. That's that's his character. Uh, Randolph Carter. That's his stand-in in any stories and you know, going forward. And it's it's him and somebody else having a conversation about, hey, why is all your stuff about indescribable, unnameable things? Why can't you just write, you know, why can't yeah. you describe it? And then he defends his position. And he uses the story <laughs> to, like, defend his writing. It's fun. It's like yeah, two, uh, I think it's two episodes down. I'm, I'm, I'm excited um, for that. I like that And that's that a good one. It's them hanging out in a graveyard. And, like, it's it's good stuff. It's it's it's, it's We have two bangers coming up. Beautiful. We have Doom the King of the Sarnath. Um, after, uh, excuse me, it's three because we have uh, the white chip next. But those two, uh, beautiful, yeah. So, anyway, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad you liked it, and I'm glad that um, you're starting to see, you know, you know, you're starting to see. Uh, oh, there's Mordor down the road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, all right, so that was uh, that's it for the transition of Juan Romero. Um, I've been Jason McKittrick, and I've been Ken James, and we'll see you on the other side of sleep. Ooh.